seven, six. Okay, hi, this is Dr. John Bennett uh, recording from Miami Beach, the home of Neurosurgical TV. Today we have the pleasure of having uh, Dr. Samer Hose, MD, a neurosurgeon from our Baghdad, Iraq. He's going to give a presentation on neurosurgical operative, um, I'm sorry, ne uh, neurosurgical operative technique. Um, and we have a guest here. Let's introduce him first. Hello, Amir. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, John, for inviting me to this fascinating webinar. I am Amir, uh, a medical student from Iran. Welcome, Amir. And we'll have other students uh, and other people come, come in as we go along. Okay, Samer, uh, welcome. Uh, and please, yeah, introduce yourself and tell us what you're going to do. And welcome. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, uh, first of all, um, I have the pleasure to present again in the Neurosurgical TV. And it, it was a long time since the last presentation. And uh, I would say hello to uh, Amin uh, Azari. Welcome to the panel. Hello, you. So, for this day, um, uh, I think it's uh, a new start, a new uh, type of presentation, a new type of idea and uh, share. It's about the neurosurgical anatomy, a basic topic, critical topic, very important topic. And I think this will be beneficial for medical students interested in neurosurgery, earlier of residency in neurosurgery, late residents will be at the focus for this type of presentation and especially the young generation neurosurgeon. The idea is to how to change anatomy from the book to the surgery. That's the main idea. I'm ready to start the presentation. It's up to you, John. Okay, we're ready to go. So, so this is the first lecture of the series of 10 lectures. And then there is some voice joining. Yeah, we see it fine. Someone need to be mute. So, this will be the... So, this is the first... A lecture of a series of 10 lectures focusing on the neurosurgical operative anatomy. Uh, to, uh, today, uh, this is the introduction lecture. I will give an overview about nine idea I want to discuss and share with my colleagues, students, and uh, with my teachers. I have no conflict of interest and I am a newly graduated neurosurgeon practicing now in uh, Iraq. Recently, I gave the FRCS a degree in neurosurgery in Glasgow, and, uh, and my specialty is vascular neurosurgery. I have both training in open vascular and endovascular neurosurgery. So let's start. I always start my lecture with this slide. We are nothing without our teacher, and we are inferior to, shamefully inferior to them if we do not advance beyond them. We have a lot of teacher role model from all around the world, and we are very thankful for them. So, the neurosurgical operative anatomy, uh, I will put, as I told you, that it's about nine ideas I want to share and discuss with you. The first and the most important for me is, the, is to th fill the gap between st snail neuroanatomy and the rotund neuroanatomy. I will discuss each item in detail later. The second is about how to study the operative neuroanatomy in spe specific, what's the resources and what's the sequence. Upside down operative anatomy, I think it will be interesting. Physioanatomical principle, some short notes. Anatomical variance and association. The colorful and geometrical operative anatomy, that will be an interesting and a new topic. The day before the match, I mean, for sure, before the surgery, what to practice, and hemostasis based on the operative anatomical finding, 
usually homeostasis is a general principles, but here we will discuss based on anatomy. And finally, the strategic management of intraoperative anatomical disaster. I mean, when disaster occur due to uh, misknowledge or uh, uh, not knowing well the usual anatomy. So that's the headline of uh, our next nine lectures. And I will give short notes about each of them, some with some example of cases. So uh, I will not take uh, more than 20 minutes more, I hope so. So first of all, what I mean by filling the gap between snell neuroanatomy and rota neuroanatomy, it's just like it's a, a joke. It's not specific about snell, snell neuroanatomy in the book. I mean, how to change from the basic neuroanatomy to the, like a snell's neuroanatomy book, to the advanced micro neurosurgical anatomy like the Rotom book. That's the change. This is a, a daily challenge for, early, for any neurosurgical resident or surgeon. What to study? Should I study picture like this? Very simple, like even maybe not for neuro, neurosurgery, or should I study in the details? We have a gap actually in the literature and book between these two extremes, like the basic, the very simple basic anatomy and the advanced operative anatomy. We need to fill the gap. That's, that will be, we will have a new idea about it. I, I give some example of what I mean by the basic neuroanatomy or the simplified. For me, it's oversimplified neuroanatomy, like demonstrating circle of fullness, like this or like this. Like this, is that a circle of fullness? It's very simple actually. Maybe for the medical student, even for the medical student, it's for the first time you want to see a simplified illustration like this, but it's not for actual work, maybe for fun and for memory, okay, it's okay. But later, we need another step. Some suggest that illustrative, uh, uh, medical illustration, it will be the advanced case. Actually, it's not an advanced step, but it's the next step for sure. Still not enough for doing the surgery. Like, this is like what, what we mean by Rotom microanatomy. In Rotom book, Rotom uh, anatomy book and approaches, you will see a picture like this. It's very nice. It's injected in the arterial and venous side. But actually for you as a surgeon, you will never face a picture like this inside the operation or in the operative field. That's the idea. If you, if you see a patient with this picture, this means that the patient is already dead and this is a cadaver. Do you, do you get the idea? So, is there uh, any, uh, any way uh, or another way? Yes. Some suggest that doing a 3D uh, sampling, maybe for the patient before the surgery, but it's not a practical one and maybe costly. Some suggest Depending more on the radiology, like this MRI show, the actual uh, branching for this patient or like this, but it's not easy. For me, it's not an additive state, uh, stage, but it's, it should be in a combination. I should, should study snail in the illustration, then roton, then combined with the radiological imaging. This is another example of operative illustrations. It's an advanced step but still not enough or not uh, satisfactory for you to do the surgery for the next day. And also some example of a fresh cadaver. That's maybe the best picture that you can see before the day of surgery because it's very similar, but uh, it's not always practical to do practice on a fresh cadaver. That's my idea about the first topic is, is about uh, how to progress, how to be in a stepwise fashion. Uh, some people say that I should stay, uh, study only snail anatomy. Some people suggest it's either rotten or never. And maybe it, it's uh, up, to, uh, up to you, it's your opinion. But my, uh, I, I will put my opinion here for discussion that my opinion is to combine all these. For me, if I have a young resident, I will suggest for him to study snail neuron for one month, then study rotten through the whole 
a training program, maybe five years, because Rotan not on a daily reading, maybe once a week or twice a week. And with that, you must use operative video, 3D uh, model, uh, illustration, uh, cadaver courses, and even the application like the App Surgeon application. All these will make you a, a good one in the neuroanatomy. A good neuroanatomist will be a good neurosurgeon. That's a key. You, you, maybe it's a very logic or very easy thing to understand, but it's a critical for those who are practicing neurosurgery now. They know what I mean by this. Most of, maybe not most, but I will, I can tell that the, there is a large percent or good percent of neurosurgeon around the world not mastering neuroanatomy perfectly. That's the idea. So I will change to the second topic. It's about how to study the operative neuroanatomy. It will be in lecture three. We will discuss the uh, as a different scheme. I will suggest two or three schemes to, uh, to how to study neuroanatomy based on your basics. If your basics good, so I will suggest some uh, uh, books, uh, otherwise I will suggest different books. That will be a lecture three about how to study the operative neurotone because we have a lot of resources. Topic three is the uninteresting one, is the upside down operative anatomy. Maybe uh, Amir can understand this point. I think it, it will be new for you, maybe, because uh, when you will be a neurosurgeon in the future, Maybe uh, after studying the neuroanatomy, when you get to the operative room, you should flip the anatomy upside down. You know why? Because you will position the patient in this position. So you will face it like the upper part will be the skull and the lower part will be the brain, the opposite to the box. You know, all the books understand the anatomy like an anatomical position, the brain above, the skull below. But in the surgery, it will be upside down. The skull will be above the brain below because we, that's usually we lose some position with inverted head. That's a really challenging and needs some practice. I will give some example. I think it will be interesting. I hope some, some uh, focus on this. This is a uh, uh, CT and geographic 3D reconstruction of uh, uh, right middle cerebral artery and aneurysm. It's uh, a middle cerebral trifurcation aneurysm, actually. And uh, uh, this is the usual NGO. What we can do, uh, we can do two points. The first is to uh, search for something that guide me. We call it landmark. Whenever you hear landmark, you, may, you will be an oriented surgeon. That's the difference between a regular surgeon, an average surgeon, and advanced surgeon. The difference is by mastering the landmark. So I will get some radiological landmark here to demonstrate it intraoperatively. If you see it's on the right side, so I don't know if uh, the pointer is there or not, John. See a pointer. So this is the carotid bifurcation already small spasm, and this is the middle cerebral artery, and one, and then the middle cerebral artery aneurysm at the bifurcation. You can see here, there is a little blush just above and below the artery. These are perforator, above and the, maybe the early temporal branch below. These are extremely important. If you notice on the side that there is a scale, so from scale, you can, measured by millimeters, what's this, uh, the distance from the carotid bifurcation to the, these perforating branches, will, which will be like about six or seven millimeter. Then we will take more than more six millimeter to get to the aneurysmal neck. That what should I think as a neurosurgeon doing the real surgery? That's my idea here. I'll show you another example within the same case. This is what we use now, and we call it the surgeon view. It's already abstracted from the, this angiogram. We already show it that uh, CT angio. Now we flip the image and we put it only the right side, the right the side that we all we are operating on, and you will see uh, on the when we are going to the surgery. 
you can recognize this is small spasmic whitish artery. It's the middle cerebral artery. And if you compare it with this perforator, both above and below, it's exactly the same. I think this is a good message for me and my colleague, uh, those who attend this lecture or those who will see this lecture later. This is the maybe the good planning that to expect it from the preoperative radiology, then to find it intraoperatively. So this is the middle cerebral artery shown intraoperatively with the two perforator, and here more clear image, and these are the per perforator just above and below. I think it's clear now, and this is the carotid bifurcation. So here we decide why to put the temporary clip on the uh, origin or the proximal part of middle cerebral artery, why we don't put it behind the perforator to preserve more perforator. So we think that the next step is temporary clipping on the distal part of M1 instead of the proximal part of M1. And after doing proximal uh, temporary clipping, we do the permanent clipping, then remove the temporary. This is the next step going, ba going ba back to the anatomy and the planning. And this is surgeon view for the same aneurysm. We found one branch above the aneurysm and two branch below, the, sorry, two, branch below, two branches below the aneurysm. And interoperatively, after clipping, we search for the superior branch, and here it is, it's the superior branch. It's not clipped within the, within, uh, with the aneurysmal clip. And here are the two lower branches. Actually, these are the superior branches, but in the uh, surgery, it will be lower, uh, I, I will call it down and up. I think this is a big message. I will just recall it back. And after temporary clipping, we put a permanent clip, then check if there is up and down side the branches of the trifurcation. This is the superior branch, actually the upper branch, and these the two lower branch. That's the demonstration of the upside down anatomy. And it, it's very critical in the surgery, as you see. Uh, another point is the physio physioanatomical principle, maybe a new topic, but it's very important that this means that you should uh, understand some physiological phenomena that occur within the uh, pathology or that change the anatomy of the region. And for example, I put some uh, rules of Roton, these we call it the Roton rules for aneurysm. These are four rules. I will demonstrate it like this. If you have aneurysm at, uh, so Roton say that there is four rules. The first rule demonstrated in number one, that the aneurysm will be always on the branching point or the bifurcation. Rule number two, that when there is a curvature in the vessel, the aneurysm will be on the outside curve, not the inside. Rule three, that when there is a flow in the parent vessel, the aneurysm will be with the flow of the parent vessel, like demonstrated in number three. And rule number four for Rotom is that the aneurysm always associated with a companion perforators that should be preserved inside the surgery. If you get the idea, this is an important principle to be put in mind for the surgeon while operating. Where should I find the aneurysm? That's the, uh, the answer maybe uh, from these principles. Another point is that uh, we will study the anatomical or give some examples of the importance of anatomical variants and even association like variation in the circle of fullness. Some suggest more variation to be studied. Other suggest more variation. Even some describe anterior circulation variation versus posterior circulation variation. And this is the, the monster stage, the final stage. As a neurosurgeon, as a vascular surgeon practicing there, doing open surgery or closed surgery like endovascular, you must have all these variants in mind, like by repeated reviewing. Another possible for, uh, advantage for the studying of variants and association can be demonstrated by this case. This case, we have a large vessel. For the beginner, it's like a large vessel, longitudinal in the posterior posse. Someone may describe it like a basilar artery. Okay, 
basal artery, what's, what he is doing behind the brain, brain stem, not in front of the brain stem. So for sure it's not a basal artery, it's a large vessel this, with the size of basal artery going up to the tentorium and from the cerebellum. So by this it's difficult one, but when, when we see that, when we know or see that this case is a brainstem cover noma, you know that there is a usual association with the brainstem cover noma, a large vessel just nearby the cover noma, we call it developmental venous anomaly that drained the normal uh, brain and drained up here to the, uh, to the galenic venous complex and should be preserved in surgery. I think this is a real practice of the importance of association and variance in the surgery. I will shift to the topic number six is the colorful or geometrical operative anatomy. Sometimes you don't have landmark. We have only these two structure longitudinal. We, uh, everyone that is operating a lot, we know that this yellowish or whitish to yellowish thick structure with a lot of vessel around, it's typical shape. We're already familiar with shape as optic nerve or the uh, beginning of optic nerve and beginning of opticism. And for sure, anything lateral to it, any structure, it will be the carotid. So this is the chiasm and the carotid. And what are these spaces? Enter chiasm. Should I open this uh, membrane? Yes, these are, are only arachnoid. Go and open it. These are optical carotid triangle. You don't need to open the optical carotid membrane, you will get only to the cilia. And if you have down lateral to the carotid, here you will find the carotid oculomotor, and here at the uh, extreme part, uh, at the right part of the figure, it's the oculomotor nerve, and here, yes, you can open the membrane and it will be lilicus. That's an important idea to uh, get familiar with the cadaveric, fresh cadaver, patient videos, operative video, and by assisting in operation, this will give you the colorful anatomy and the geometrical anatomy. We will give a lot of examples in the lecture because sometimes it's not as expected. Sometimes the field will, will be bloody, dark field, a lot of hemostasis, it's unknown. And what's this structure, by the way? Just a small quiz within the lecture. And one, two, three, it's the optic chiasm. You, you must uh, pick up all the surrounding while doing these surgeries. Principle number seven is the day before the match. I mean, for sure, before the surgery, what we should do because the reality is totally different from what's written in the book. Tomorrow, which I mean the day of operation, there will be like this, and you will face an operative field like this. There is no uh, illustration on it. There is no person telling you that the, uh, the above structure of the optic nerve, be careful. The middle one is the carotid with C and the above the frontal lobe, below temporal lobe. The X is on the liquid membrane and just two, just four millimeter to the X is the cavernous sinus, be careful. This is the idea to the day of surgery will face a real um, field and you must keep a good anatomy in mind to uh, pass this battle. Uh, topic number eight is the operative contraindication. There is a lot of operative contraindication. Some example is to uh, use sharp dissection, not blunt dissection as demonstrated here. And also to always keep the parent vessel on a, a safe and accessible pathway, especially when doing aneurysm surgery. And I will give some example on this principle, the operative contraindication. And we get to the final topic, it's the strategic management of intraoperative anatomical disaster. We already know that there is a lot of intraoperative disaster, but we, we will focus on the anatomical disaster, I mean, disaster occur due to lack of, of, uh, of anatomical knowledge. That's the idea. Or in another way, I will say it that when the anatomy will save you from disaster. That's the idea. I will give some example or uh, maybe one example for this. This is a case of rupture, uh, spontaneous hemorrhage, ruptured aneurysm. 
Uh, if I ask a person where you expect to be the rupture aneurysm is, someone could tell me that maybe this or this, the site of anterior complicating artery in the first two sections. Others may told me that the right sylvian hematoma suggests it's a mid-cerebral artery rupture, not an uh, acom aneurysm rupture. So we get a CT angio and we have multiple aneurysm for this case, and it's both anterior communicating artery aneurysm and mid cerebral artery aneurysm. For you as a surgeon, which one is rupture? Any, anyone can think why, what's the difference? Why should I know which one is rupture? For sure, oh. if, if the anterior communicating artery aneurysm is the rupture one, so oh. any, I should go directly to the carotid to secure the parent vessel. If the mid-cerebral artery is the rupture one, and I wrongly go to the anterior communicating, so I may, I may cause rupture of the MCA by traction of the temporal lobe. So this is the strategic management. I should put a strategy, which is the riskier step, which is the safer step, and I should outweigh this. And for sure, you, you should have the knowledge for that, uh, like this in the Greenberg Handbook, dealing with this situation when you have two multiple aneurysm on angio for rupture, which one is the rupture? Actually, with the all five answer put in the green bed, it is not an answer for my case because both of them, the same epicenter of hemorrhage, both of them not, have no specific spasm, both of them same size, both of them have Murphy T. So I decide, like by, by experience of uh, some of uh, the pioneer I practice with, he told me that if there is no clue, just go to I ACOM if it's anterior circulation, PCOM if it's posterior circulation. So in this case, I go to the ACOM and it was the ruptured aneurysm and the clipid, then we go to the MCA and the clipid, it's, uh, and it was unruptured. So that's the idea, I hope you get it. And actually, uh, this case, is an adult polycystic kidney disease. It's typical with two large polycystic kidney. And these type of persons, adult polycystic kidney, they are very common to have aneurysms in the brain, cerebral aneurysms. So these are the general idea I'm about to finish. Uh, these are the nine topics that I give an overview today. And I will discuss on the next lecture one by one. Uh, on Sundays, and I hope it will be like just sparking an idea to uh, open discussion. It's not my uh, pure idea, and it's a correct idea. I put this point for discussion. We are all, all learning. And uh, uh, before I finish, uh, I want to share and the last achievement of the vascular neurosurgery book, and it was the review of a neurosurgery journal and in this review they recommend the book for a primary exam of the American Board of Neurosurgery and also for the subspeciality exam fellow in cerebrovascular and endovascular neurosurgery in the American Board of Neurosurgery. I, I think it's a, a new thing that some books from outside you, the states recommended for the American Board of Neurosurgery. And I'm really thankful for the Journal of Neurosurgery for doing that, but um, um, I, I don't know, but I'm really thankful. As a take home message, uh, this is William Harvey, the, the great uh, doctor. I learn anatomy not from books, but from dissections, not from the tents of philosopher, but from the fabric of nature. That's a, an exact take home message and also the hunter's equation, surgery is anatomy and hemostasis. If you want to be a good neurosurgeon, try to be a perfect or to master your anatomy. We all, uh, we are doing this by standing on the shoulder of giant and by uh, doing it through a teamwork and thank you. That's the end of presentation. Very good. Excellent. Uh, Lam, you're going to take you off the screen share. Very good. You, you know that already. Okay. Uh, excellent presentation. And I, I mistakenly said neurosurgical operative technique. It's neurosurgical operative anatomy. I apologize for that. 
Okay, before we start the discussion, uh, Samer, let's go around and meet some people that we haven't met yet. Uh, Mohammed, could you please introduce yourself to Samer? Just unmute yourself there, Mohammed. You may be yes. in Samer. Yes, I'm a colleague of uh, Samer. I'm also a young neurosurgeon uh, in Iraq, uh, and uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, uh, he, he learned me too much about uh, these lectures and uh, intraoperatively and uh, I'm uh, from Iraq. I'm working now in uh, Ramadi Hospital and uh, I'm, uh, I, I, I hope I will transfer to Baghdad next few months uh, with Dr. Samad. Thank okay. you. Welcome, Mohammed. Oh, uh, Amir, could you please introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Amir, a medical student from Iran. And thank you. Dr. Ho, that was a great lecture. Uh, that was a fantastic lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Amir. Uh, let's see you, Stuart. Uh, Stuart, don't they stand? Please introduce yourself, Stuart. How are you doing? And your colleague also, please. Uh, you're unmuted. You're muted. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Stuart. Welcome. Good morning. Good, good day. Could you please introduce yourself to Samer? Good morning, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Hoss. Uh, we are in the hospital with my college, Dr. Soria, in Cuenca, Ecuador. Ecuador, vamos a tener más charlas in Espanol. Okay, Al Hassan, could you please introduce yourself? Can you hear us okay? We can't hear you, Hal. we can't hear you. I don't know why. I guess your audio is not okay, Al Hassan. Okay, we can't hear you, Al Hassan. I'm sorry. Sorry. We'll try to fix it. Okay. Uh, hello, Ulrich. You've been playing basketball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hello, John. How are you doing? Good. How are you today? Could you please introduce yeah, yourself to Samer? Yeah, thanks. Thank you for this. Uh, such a brilliant presentation, Professor Samer. Um, absolutely loved it. Um, I'm Ulrich Sidney, I'm a final year medical student from Cameroon and a future research associate at Harvard's uh, PGSSC. Nice meeting you and hopefully we can get more um, of this uh, vascular neuro neuroanatomy in the next uh, weeks. Thank you very much. Very good. W welcome. Okay, we'll open it up for questions or comments from anyone. So I would like go ahead, to start. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, please, um, what would be your advice for someone uh, starting to study neuroanatomy, like it's my case, who's not yet in residency? Is it, do, do the same documents apply or do we need something else for a beginner's guide into neurovascular neuroanatomy? Okay. Um... Hello, Sydney. It's nice to me um, to meet you. And uh, actually, I, I talk about this uh, in the presentation, and I will give it uh, in maybe lecture two or three. How to study the anatomy? We will uh, divide it into uh, three categories, like for the beginners, middle stage, and the advanced stage. Actually, it's totally different. It's upon, uh, uh, according to your interests. Uh, if you have some specialty in mind, I mean some specialty within the neurosurgery, that mm -hmm. will guide you through more anatomy uh, pathways. That's the big idea. If, uh, if you are a spine guy, please take the basics from the brain and focus on more spinal anatomy. If you are a brain guy, which, which is the example that I give now, uh, just take the principle of spinal anatomy and focus more on whatever you can get in the neuroanatomy. And I think it will be like, uh, it's a combination of planning and coaching. Uh, maybe in the lecture, I, I will give you some example of planning. And I, I will suppose it a successful plan for me and my colleagues. And even I have been told from my teachers that these are, were successful plans. And also you should have a local coach or maybe international coach to discuss from time to time what's okay. your level, what, what you need next. Sometimes, Sydney, you can get, you, you can pick the idea of the whole book by two weeks, 
some person may, may take six months is totally different from person to person. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Hammer. More questions and comments? Well, you know, I'll, I'm not a neurosurgeon, but it, it, neuroanatomy, from being around neurosurgeons, it's so important. Uh, and I'm impressed by the way neurosurgeons continue to study neuroanatomy. It's just not something you take in medical school and you know it, forget it. Uh, do you find yourself brushing up before you go back to every case or are you just only certain cases do you brush up on your neuroanatomy before you go in there to the operating room? Uh, actually, it's up to uh, your level of practice, but uh, a general principle, you must review the operative steps one by one, and you must review the patient-specific anatomy. That's a totally different topic. You must review the radiology, and you can imagine the anatomy, because if I do imaging to the patient, he, have a, a sm he had a small carotid artery, I should be uh, aware of that pre-op, so when I will face it intra-op, it, it will be uh, like already in my planning on my mind. That's the idea if you get it. So we have a patient specific anatomy, we have the general anatomy. And actually if you compare the neuroanatomy that we need now, maybe like to do an aneurysm surgery with the neuroanatomy that we already have in the college, it's like, <laughs> I, I don't know, but one to billion percent. <laughs> it's, it's nothing, actually it's nothing. It's like only the, the topic, like what are the arteries of the brain, anterior cerebral, middle cerebral, posterior cerebral, and that's it. And Roton, they discussed the anterior cerebral like by five branches or middle cerebral by 12 branches, uh, sorry, middle cerebral by, by four parts. And the four, uh, each part have branches and each, part have specific perforators and each part have specific territory from the middle cerebral artery only. And the fourth part is not a branch, it's a 12 branch, about 12. Some person have 10, some person have up to 18, and it's, uh, these are 12 branches, and each branch has its name, its territory, its variation. Do you get the idea? That's totally different. That's why I start my, the, with the first principle, to fill the gap between the snails, I mean the medical student level of anatomy, and the rotund level of anatomy. It's totally different. Did you have the pleasure of meeting Dr. Rokhan when he's uh, alive? Did you meet him, uh, Samer, ever? Did you meet Dr. Sorry? Rotan? Did you meet Dr. Rotan when he was alive? Can you hear me? Did you meet him? No, no, no never did. No. Okay, but yeah, I'm sure you know people that, that have met him because I think what well, two or three years he died and we actually tried to do a, a, a conference in his honor. Uh, but anyways, yes. um, but he's the big authority in anatomy, in neuroanatomy. He's the number one authority, correct? Any, yeah. any honest uh, neurosurgeon still studying, I think he's praying for Roton on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he made so many illustrations and, and, and uh, okay, um, and this, this may be, um, this is a non-neurosurgical question, I'm not a neurosurgeon. Are there certain areas of the brain that, you, that are very, very dangerous to go into and you really, and you brush up on your neuroanatomy before you go in there? Is one area of the brain especially, you have to really, really know your stuff? Sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, is there is there one part of the brain that's especially difficult that you review your neuroanatomy before you go in that to that case? So, do you know what I mean? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, actually, from eloquency, the whole brain is eloquent. But for us as a neurosurgeon, there is some sacrificable part of the brain, maybe right the frontal lobe, some parts of the temporal lobe in specific surgeries, even sacrificable. You can remove the whole part. But some parts are unsacrificable, unforgiving, and uh, when you get to the core, it's more difficult. I think for the aneurysm surgery, it's one of the difficult surgery. Maybe the, next, the, the only surgery that it's more difficult than doing aneurysm surgery is the brainstem surgeries. 
I think one of the books, uh, the last books included uh, Rotom, is that with the Spitzler doing the brainstem approaches. I think it's the highest level of using anatomy during surgery. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the brainstem is the most difficult one. Thank you. Stuart, do you have any comments or questions? Uh, Stuart is his associate in Ecuador. You're muted there, Stuart. Let me unmute. Okay, go ahead. Uh, no, no, uh, no, any questions. Thank you. Uh, really uh, clear the principles of the vascular neurosurgery. Uh, learning about the college, thank you very much. And I hope uh, the next week uh, be here again. Thank, thank you, you, Dr. Rose. Thank you. Actually, I think we will share more question and discussion next week, but I, I think uh, I need, if there is any suggestion or a question or maybe some objections of some topics, I will be more than ready to answer. Someone. Okay, anybody, any more comments or questions before we close? Anybody Someone else? Uh, Ahmad, uh, uh, Ahmed Hamid, do you want to meet Samar? Could you please unmute yourself and say hello? Okay. Uh, hello? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, Dr. Samar is a great inspiration. He's my friend already. I've been involved in most of his uh, cases that he demonstrated earlier in this presentation. Uh, I'm honored to be part of his teams, and we are uh, continuously taking from his uh, massive introduction and uh, commission to his patients and uh, to uh, also to his learning activities and educational activities. And uh, proud to meet you all in this meeting. Very good. Thank you. Welcome, Ahmed Al Hassan and Mohammed. These are three Iraqi. Uh, Actually, future neurosurgeon. I think they, they in ten years they will be the real future of Iraq. They have a high standard and uh, they they are really genius. Uh, John, there is some question on the chat about. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, let me uh, let me look at that. Uh, Samer, you work you work an extra. I should be doing that. That's my job. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, hold on there. As usual, when you want the computer to work, it doesn't work. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. It never happened. <laughs> Which never happened. Okay, let me go to another screen. Never happened, but you know, you expect these things. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, let me see. Um, let me check here. I. I think it's a private message. It will not appear for you, John. Do you get any questions? Hello, John. John, do you hear me? I think John was we have a auto mute. John, do you hear me? Yeah, you're in two screens there, Summer. Okay. So you you need to get off. You go on two screens, right? Yes. Just just uh, to uh, the point that someone may, may be asking about the approaches, and I want to answer that. That it will be the next series. That why I put it in the operative anatomy. So 
if we have another series, it will be like on the operation based on the series. That's the idea. Very good. Uh, thank you very much, Shammer, and we look forward to the rest of your presentations. And thanks for thank taking you. the time. And all the panelists, thank you very much. It's going to be recorded. It's recorded, and, and we're going to edit it and send it to everybody. So, any uh, okay, Samer, thank you very much. We'll stay on here, and I'm just going to end this.